Welcome everyone. So whenever an object flows through a fluid or fluid flow pa past an object, the reason of the flow behind the object is very different from the flow that is in front of the object. The flow region behind the object is very disturbed and this, and this region of flow which is very disturbed behind the, behind the object is called the wake region. When the, uh, when the fluid is liquid, it is very easy to visualize the wake region. The most common example would be the wake region behind a duck swimming in a pond or the long wake that we can see behind the sea sailing across the oceans. Similarly, there is also wake or a region of disturbed flow behind the cars, though you can't see it. However, if the road is dusty, by the movement of the dust behind the car, we can get an idea of the wake region. Today, our experiment pertains to the, the velocity of the flow in a wake region. More precisely, the aim of today's experiment is to measure the velocity distribution in the wake region of a circular cylinder. There is a separate experiment where you actually visualize the flow behind or the wake behind the circular cylinder. If you have already gone through the experiment, you would have probably seen that the wake region behind the circular cylinder is unsteady because of the alternating vortices that are being generated from either side of the cylinder, also famously known as the, the Karman vortex street. Therefore, the velocity that we would be measuring in our experiment today would rather be an average velocity and not the instantaneous velocity of the wake. The main instrument that we would be using in today's experiment is a pitot static tube. The pitot static tube gives us two kinds of pressure, the total or the stagnation pressure and the static pressure. The pitot static tube has to be placed in such a way that the tip of the pitot tube faces the upstream direction of the flow. That is, this portion of the pitot tube has to be at 180 degree to the flow direction. The fluid ramps at the tip of the pitot tube and comes to rest. The pressure exerted by the fluid as it comes to rest at the tip of the pitot tube is the stagnation pressure. Therefore the, therefore, the sensors at the tip of the pitot tube gives us the total pressure or the stagnation pressure. Whereas, the sensor at the periphery of the pitot tube which is at 90 degree to the flow direction give us the static pressure. Once we have the total pressure and the static pressure, we can find the difference between total pressure and the static pressure to find the dynamic pressure. As it has already been mentioned in the manual, the dynamic pressure is given by the expression half into rho into velocity square, where rho is the density of the fluid, which in our case is the density of the air. Now, from this expression, we can find the velocity of the uh, flow in the wake region. The same concept of pitot static tube is also used to measure the velocity of aircrafts. Though in the experiment, we are going to measure the velocity distribution in the wake of a cylinder, we, by using the same concept and same setup, we can also mount these objects inside the wind tunnel and using the static pitot tube, we can measure the uh, velocity in the wake region of, an, of a vehicle or, a, or the wake region behind the aerofoil of an aircraft or let us say a ship. The same can also be used to measure the wake velocity distribution behind a simni. Now let us see how to perform the experiment by using a simple model of a cylinder. Suppose this is the cylinder and we have a flow from this direction and we will have a wake region on this side of the cylinder. The wake region of the cylinder will be symmetrical about a horizontal plan which passes to the central axis of the cylinder. Therefore, if we measure the velocity distribution on one side of this plan, we can safely assume that the velocity would be similar on the other side of the plan on an, in an average sense. Also assume that the upper, the, uh, the vertically upward direction is the positive y direction and the position of the plan is at y is equal to 0. So, we will start the experiment by putting our pitot tube at y is equal to 0 in the uh, wake region. 
then we'll carefully move the pitot tube let's say by a vertical distance of delta y and read the and note down the uh, total pressure and the static pressure we'll do it again move it by delta y write down the total pressure and the static pressure and we'll be doing it till we are sure that we have moved out of the wake region of the cylinder now the question arises that how do we know that we have moved out of the wake region of the cylinder if we see that for three four successive uh, position of the pitot tube the reading of the total pressure and the static pressure is same then we can safely assume that we have moved out of the wake region and we are, we are in the free stream region so now let us see the setup of the experiment we will be conducting the experiment in a wind tunnel we have a fan at the other end of the wind tunnel and that fan sucks in air to this end of the wind tunnel therefore the flow in the wind tunnel would be from my left to right also at the entrance of the wind tunnel there is a honeycomb structure so that the inlet free stream velocity is properly aligned and uniform so we'll start the experiment by by mounting the cylinder here this is the slot where we mount the cylinder the cylinder diameter is 25 mm this region of the wind tunnel has a uniform cross section the dimension is 0.6 into 0.6 meter since the flow is from this direction to that direction the wake region would be behind the cylinder here so now we have finished the installation of the cylinder this is the slot where we where we insert the static pitot static tube as you can see there is a vertical slot here and this slot is there so that we can we can move the pitot static tube vertically upward so that we can measure the distribution of the velocity we also have a mechanical arrangement here so by rot carefully rotating the wheels we can move the pitot static tube upward in a very graded manner there is a scale so that we can get our desired delta y so now we will start the fan and we have to wait for some for few minutes so that the velocity sets in after that i will show you how to take the reading in practice so now the velocity has set in and we are ready to take the readings so what the reading that the manometer is showing is the static pressure as you can see the reading is somewhere around 325 now if we rotate the knob to position 2 the reading that the manometer will be showing is the total pressure as you can see the value is fluctuating around 230 at this point there are two things to note as you have seen the total pressure shown by the manometer is lower than the static pressure but the man of the, the reading that the manometer is showing is actually the vacuum gas pressure that is how low is the pressure compared to the ambient pressure so while noting down the pressure we have to put a negative sign in front of both the total pressure and the static pressure the other thing to note is that the values are constantly fluctuating that is because the wake region is very unsteady as i have already mentioned before so the way to note it down would be wait for a few minutes note down the lowest value that is given by the manometer also note then the maximum value that is given by the manometer and we can take an average of the two for both the static as well as the total pressure so now we have already taken the reading for the position y is equal to 0 we can now carefully rotate this wheel and move the pitot tube up by 2 mm now it has been moved up by 2 mm and we can again take the reading of the static pressure and the total pressure by using the manometer so now we know how to take the reading for the static as well as the total pressure so we'll keep on moving the static pitot tube upward by rotating this wheel till we move out of the wake region so now we know how to take the readings for both the static as well as the total pressure
Next, we will again move the static feeder tube by 2 mm and take the reading and so on. We will keep on doing it until we move out of the wake region of the cylinder. After that, we have to perform the calculations as has been mentioned or explained in the manual. Now that we have learned how to take the readings, let's do calculation using sample data. Before we go forward and do the calculation, let's look at few modifications that have to be made in the schematic diagram of the experimental setup. The diagram on the left side is the diagram from the manual of the experiment and the diagram on the right is the modified schematic diagram. The first, the first change is optional that is the image is just inverted in the modified diagram so that the direction of airflow is same as the direction it was in the wind tunnel during the demonstration of the experiment. The remaining changes are important. The first one is we are not using a wall pressure tape and a pitot probe separately to measure the static and the total pressure. Instead, we are using a pitot static tube to measure the total and the static pressure. Secondly, we are not using a bed manometer and a pendant manometer to take the readings for the static and the total pressure. Instead, we are using a digital manometer to take the readings. With, with that in mind, let's go forward and look at the mathematical formula that are used for the uh, to calculate the velocity in the wake region. Here also something uh, few things are, are to be kept in mind. First of all, since we are using a digital manometer, we do not need to multiply the specific weight with the manometer head to find the total pressure. Instead, we will get the reading directly. Similar is the case for static pressure. Another important point is that the readings shown by the manometer are not the absolute values of pressure but the vacuum gauge pressure that is how low is the pressure compared to the atmospheric pressure and therefore we have to add a minus sign in, in front of the values shown by the manometer. Uh, we will need the d density of air in order to find the velo velocity in the wake region. The density of air is calculated using the ideal gas law and uh, here we need the atmospheric pressure of air and that is 758.7 millimeter of mercury that is converted to SI unit by multiplying with the density of mercury and uh, gravitational acceleration Z. The temperature of the atmospheric air is taken to be 35 degrees Celsius and that comes to be 308 Kelvin. And the next equation is the, the most important equation which is used in this experiment to find the velocity in the wake region. This equation is basically derived by applying the Bernoulli's equation. From this equation, we can get the expression of the velocity that is shown here. Here also we can get the velocity just using the, the first expression. We do not need to go to these expressions since we are using a digital manometer. Now let's have a look at the sample data. This is the sample data. There are lots of columns. I will go through each column and explain what they mean. The leftmost column is the column that represents the position of the pitot static tube or the y position. The delta y is 2 millimeter as it was already mentioned in the demonstration of the experiment. The next three columns are regarding the total pressure. If you would have already seen in the experiment, the readings that was that was shown in the manometer was were fluctuating. So total pressure max is the maximum value 
of those fluctuating values and total pressure minimum is the minimum values from the fluctuating values that those were that are shown in the manometer and the next column that is the average total pressure is the average of these two values it's similar for the st for the static pressure the static maximum static pressure is the maximum value of among the fluctuating values that were shown in the manometer and the third and the, and this column represents the average of these two columns another thing that has to be kept in mind is that as we gradually move upward or as the value of y gradually increases we'll see that the average static pressure doesn't change anymore the last two row values in the last two rows of the static pressure are same similarly the values at the last two rows of the total pressure are same which means that we have moved out of the weak region of the cylinder and entered the free stream region from these two two rows at the last we can get the free stream velocity of the wind tunnel this is the column which shows the calculated velocity in the wake region and the average total pressure and the average static pressure column is used in order to find out the velocity in the wake region using the equation that was shown in the previous slide once we have done these calculations we can make the position of the pitot static tube non dimensional by dividing the y value by the diameter of the cylinder the diameter of the cylinder is 25 mm and the last column is the non dimensional velocity of the wake region the velocity is being made non dimensional by dividing the velocity by the free stream velocity which is 17.05 in this case once we have performed all the calculations and made the table the last two column of the table will be used to plot the distribution of velocity in the weak region which is shown here as you can see y by d is the non dimensional y values are plot are along the y axis and the x axis represents the non dimensional velocity in the weak region as we go up as we go up we can see that the velocity of the weak region gradually increases and finally it asymptotically matches the free stream value free stream velocity value that's all thank you